Now, there is a great quote by a dude called H. James Harrington. I forget exactly what he's famous for. I think it's some form of business thing. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, I'm not too fussed. I just like this quote. Um, the quote is that measurement is the first step that leads to control and eventually to improvement. If you can't measure something, you can't understand it. If you can't understand it, you can't control it. And if you can't control it, you can't improve it. Now, this is true to an extent. However, we need to be very careful with things like body composition as to just how accurately we try and quantify these things. Um, it's, it's ultimately like, um, like cooking. With cooking, a lot of the time, um, you will be putting in specific amounts of certain ingredients to a dish. You'll be, you'll be measuring things and, and sure, you may have through that some understanding of it. But at the end of the day, a lot of, a lot of chefs don't always weigh every single ingredient out. They don't track the macros properly, I know. Um, but they understand the various pitfalls with weighing things and measuring things to a certain level. And the same thing sort of applies with, with body composition. Um, we need to delve into just how accurate do we, we need to be with, with body composition. Body composition assessment comes in, in many forms. Um, the stars on the slide that you'll see, they denote what's most commonly found in gyms or in personal training studios. Um, you have MRI scans and DEXA scans. Both of these require going to some form of facility and lying down for a while while the machine scans you effectively. Um, they're usually quite expensive as well. Next up, we have skin fold calipers, um, which involves pinching um, the amount of fat that's held under the skin at various locations across the body. We have underwater weighing, which um, looks at how much, how, what volume of water does your body weight displace. Um, and you can, you can figure out somebody's rough body composition from that. We have bioelectrical impedance, um, which is where you either stand on some scales or you may hold um, some form of handheld device, or you may find a machine that's a combination of the two where you stand on some scales and hold some handles. It basically sends an electrical signal around your body and based on how long that takes to, um, to travel around your body, um, it comes up with some estimates for your body composition. And then lastly, we have, as depicted on the slide, the gym bro who lifts up his shirt in the mirror, does the, the ab rubbing, maybe pinches some hip fat, maybe jiggles his quads a bit and then comes up with some random arbitrary number as to your, your body fat percentage from that. So on the one hand, body composition analysis is great. It gives us another tool, another number that we can use to show our clients that we're potentially progressing. At least that's the theory behind it anyway. But because of the various pitfalls of body composition analysis that we're just gonna go into, um, it's often a number that can actually dishearten clients quite a lot because it may well seem that as per their body fat percentage readings, they're not progressing as quickly as they'd like. Uh, some people may find some methods, including calipers, where you have to physically pinch skin. That may be overly invasive for some people. I can't imagine many people enjoy stripping off in front of a personal trainer and having them pinch various sites on their body with a pair of metal tweezers and then tutting and going, ooh, at their various body fat percentage readings.